So people often wonder how I take bottles that start out like this and turn them into this. Well, there are actually two ways to do it. The first way leaves some marks of the ocean on the bottle, and some people like that. First, you take a bottle like that, and you take a uh, butter knife, which I found in the ocean, so I use for this kind of project. Right Yeah. And then you take your bottle and start scraping. First, scrape it along the ground to get the stuff off the bottom. That way it stays standing up okay. Next, you take that bottle, you take that butter knife, and you just start scraping away at all of the barnacles and built up sea life that happened to uh, attach itself to the bottle. Oftentimes there's a lot of scraping to do. Step two is cleaning out the inside of the bottle and wiping down the outside. This is in preparation for step three, which is a more detailed cleaning. In step three, we use a bottle brush, yes, super technical equipment here, to do a good cleaning of the inside of the bottle. I've added a little bit of dish soap to the bottle brush just to make sure that I can get a good solid cleaning inside the bottle here. For step four, I take a soft sponge and just go over the outside of the bottle gently with soap and water. Step five is simply just drying the bottle out inside and outside. After all that, what you have is a beautiful bottle that still has the marks of some barnacles and some sea life that was growing on it around parts of the bottle itself. The bottom of the bottle is now clean enough so that you can see the maker's marks and the word Tacoma on it. You can also see that the bottle maker's mark shows it was made by the Owens, Illinois Bottling Company and that it was manufactured in 1942. You can see some of the ocean marks on it in different places here, especially right along here where it was sticking out of the water and the barnacles really grew well on it. So that's method one. Like I said, it leaves some marks of the ocean on it and a lot of people like it that way. On to method two now. So how do I clean up bottles from the ocean and make them look almost brand new? Well, first, I need bottles. Now that I've got bottles, I need the tools with which to clean them. And the first of those tools is a bucket. Then good sturdy gloves, very important, and you'll see why in a minute. Then some brushes, a uh, big brush, that's helpful. Uh, some sponges, I usually cut them into pieces. That's helpful for getting into small bottles. There's another sponge. Then we've got a toothbrush really good for getting into small bottles as well. We've got a big bottle brush that gets around a lot of cracks and crevices. And then we got a couple of small bro bottle brushes for really tiny bottles. They're really helpful. We've also got not one, but two coat hangers bent to certain angles to get into certain bottles. And probably the most important thing of all, muriatic acid. So this is where we combine everything. First, we get some very hot water, put it into our bucket to get it ready for the bottles. Then we get a bottle. Here we go. It's one of the bigger ones. And you try to fill it all the way to the top. That way it uh, stays at the bottom of the bucket. Of course, you got to make sure that 
each bottle gets enough water or else they'll float and that doesn't help with the uh, cleaning process at all. Tiny bottles can be a pain. You really have to hold those under until you make sure they're completely full. Once you've got all your bottles in and you fill your bucket to about four fifths of the way, you take your gloves, you put them on, and you pour in your muriatic acid. I use the rings around the top of this bucket to let myself know just how much muriatic acid I'm putting in compared to the water. It's about an 85-15 split water muriatic acid. And the chemical reaction that the muriatic acid causes happens pretty much instantly. That bubbling is all the organic material being burned off. The next step is to wait between two and four hours while all that organic material is being softened up by the acid. Once the acid has finished doing its work, it's time to get the bottles out. Make sure you put your gloves on and then you start taking out the bottles. Another thing you want to make sure is that you empty all of the liquid inside the bottles back into the bucket because a lot of that muriatic acid winds up inside the bottles as well. And you don't want to bring that into your sink. The next step is to do a really good cleaning of the outside of the bottles to try to get as much of the organic material off as possible and then to fill the bottles with hot water on the inside and swish it around, getting out as much organic material that has been softened as possible before you move on to the detailed cleaning step. And now we start with that detailed cleaning. Uh, most bottles, you can use a soft kitchen sponge to get what's left of the organic material off after the uh, acid bath treatment. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit rougher a cloth. You can use one of those green scrubby pads and those usually get most of what's left off if your blue soft sponge doesn't do the trick. And this one bottle happens to be a good example of that. So here's a, a green scrubby sponge that I'm going to have to take off some more material with that didn't quite get taken off by the acid treatment. Now stick with me, this is where it gets technical. I take my blue soft sponge, put kitchen soap on it, squeeze it into the bottle, then I take this steel hanger, which I've shaped specifically for this job, and trust me, it took a couple of years of trial and error to get the right tools for this job, but these work really great. Then I do exactly what you see me doing. I spin the bottle around and make sure I get every single inch of the inside of the bottle with the sponge, and then I uh, pop the sponge out with the hanger, and then I clean it out and review to see if I've gotten all of the dirty spots. And then it's just, as they say, rinse and repeat. I do the same process with every bottle. Some of them I use rougher pads, some of them I use softer pads, depending on how much dirt or muck is inside each bottle. Some of them I use just a bottle brush, and some of them I use my hangers for. Whatever works best for each individual bottle. And here's one of the Coke bottles, which I'm sure you're all waiting just to see how they turn out because everybody loves the Coke bottles. Of course, sometimes it's not as easy as this. Sometimes I've just got to take my tiniest bottle brush and work out a bottle until all the junk comes out. But it is worth it because in the end, we get to see the following. and we get to see these bottles go from this <laughs> to this. So now I'll give you a little information on each of these bottles, including what they were, if I know, who made them, and when. This one was a Nesbitts of California soda bottle 
made by the Glass Container Corporation. You'll see that maker's mark in a minute. Uh, they were in business from 1934 to 68, and this bottle was made in 1957. This is what it originally looked like. I found this picture on the internet. And here you can see the maker's mark with that GC on the top center. That's Glass Container Corporation. This is a large Hires root beer bottle made by Owens, Illinois Glass Company, who used the mark on here from 1929 to 1960. This bottle was made circa 1937 to 57. I say 37 to 57 because for many of their customers, Owens, Illinois only put the last number of the year on their bottles for these three decades. And this is a small Hires root beer bottle made by Owens, Illinois. Uh, manufactured circa 1935 to 55. I really love these two bottles. Uh, they're basically twins, except one is obviously bigger than the other, and it's super rare to find two bottles in such great condition that are mirror images of each other. This is a good time to talk about the Owens, Illinois Bottling Company. Owens, Illinois which is still in business today, is one of the largest bottle-making companies in existence, which is why almost all of the bottles you see in this video, even though I found them on multiple dives in multiple places, have a variation of the Owens, Illinois stamp somewhere on them. This is a Fresca soda bottle made by Anchor Hawking Glass Company, which was in business from 38 to 80, and this one was made in the mid to late 70s. You can see right in the middle that was that anchor hawking symbol and this is what it would have looked like with the painted on logo and advertisements on it. And this is a great example of how ubiquitous Owens, Illinois has become. These are three different soda bottles from three different companies made in three different years but all by Owens, Illinois. The first one is the Arctic Bottling Company soda bottle. Uh, it was made by Owens, Illinois, circa 1933 to 53. The next one is a random soda bottle made by Owens, Illinois in 1951. And the third one is another random soda bottle made by Owens, Illinois in 1945. But here's what you all came to see. Beautiful old Coke bottles. Now, a note on these. Coca-Cola used to have its manufacturers stamp the name of the towns that the bottles were supposed to go to on the bottom of them. So when they got there, you'd be drinking a Coke from your hometown, or at least so you thought. Most of the bottles were actually made out of those towns and then shipped to them. And not surprisingly, all four of these Coke bottles, as were most of the Coke bottles of this era, were manufactured by the Owens, Illinois Bottle Manufacturing Company as you'll see by the maker's mark stamped on the bottom of them in a few moments. And as we look at the maker's marks on the bottom, you'll also see that Coca-Cola had Owens, Illinois, helpfully, print the actual last two digits of the year that the bottle was manufactured on the right-hand side of the maker's mark on each of these bottles. Very helpful for dating purposes. This is a Mile City, Montana bottle made by Owens, Illinois in 1941. And you can see the maker's mark and the date right there. Here's one of the Tacoma Coke bottles I found made by Owens, Illinois also in 1941, as you can see right there. And this is the second Tacoma Coke bottle I found. This one was made by Owens, Illinois in 1947. And finally, a Wenatchee Coke bottle made by Owens, Illinois in 1946. Now this bottle, this is why we bottle dive. This bottle was made by John Lum and Company, which was only in existence from the 1870s to 1905, which means this bottle was manufactured circa 1880 to 1900. The uh, bottle has lots of occlusions or little glass bubbles in it and you can see some sort of design printed on it, which is where the painted on logo was basically permanently plastered on it by wave and sand action. 
here you can see the JL and Co and some air bubbles and this bottle is anywhere between 125 and 150 years old that's pretty cool these are three simple old beer bottles this is really a good study in how two different companies can make the same product for a beer manufacturer those two twin bottles one was made in 1945 by Northwestern Bottling Company, and the other one was made in 1955 by, you guessed it, Owens, Illinois. But they still look exactly the same. And this pudgy little long neck, so to speak, bottle was made by Northwestern Glass Company circa 1947. Finally, this tiny bottle was probably a holder of either cologne or oil, and it was made by, once again, Owens, Illinois, circa 1931 to 1951. You can see the Owens, Illinois symbol in the middle and the helpful little one on the side. So as we look over some of my collections of bottles, all of which need a really good dusting, these Coke bottles each have a different town or city name on the bottom of them, you can see the amazing variety of bottles you can find here in the Pacific Northwest. Some of them are relatively young. Some of them, like the one on the front far left here, is over 200 years old. That one was made in Germany. Here's some flasks I found. So now you know what it takes to clean out the bottles we find here in the Pacific Northwest and make them beautiful again. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you like any of the bottles you see right now on the screen, these ones are actually just stored at my house collecting dust. If you feel like you want one, hit me up. I'll probably give it to you for free. Thanks for watching, and remember, fins up, dive safe.